We're now in the season of creation tide in the church's year. Next Sunday, the 4th of October, we're going to celebrate harvest and give thanks to God for all the food that has been grown and processed for us to eat. It's also the date that St Francis of Assisi is remembered and celebrated as patron saint of animals and ecology. In 1925, the 4th of October was designated as World Animal Day, which is celebrated internationally and focuses on endangered species. In the last 50 years, we have become more and more aware of how much the way we live is affecting the whole planet and everything that lives on it, thanks to the work of David Attenborough and others. They have recently given a stark warning that unless we make radical changes to the way we live, one million animal and plant species are threatened with extinction. That's a third of animals and plants. Partly, it's partly because of changing weather patterns and global warming, partly because of our exploitation of creation. If we look at the beginning of Genesis, we find that when God finished his work of creation, he looked at everything and saw that it was very good. He also made man to live in community with all creation, responsible for it, caring for and sharing the earth with one another and the creatures. People, animals, birds, fish and insects all form communities with members that need to be loved and looked after. Communities are also interdependent on one another. If we think of bees, which are one of the threatened species, without them certain plants would not be pollinated, so crops would fail to come to maturity and there would be no seed to plant for future crops, as well as no honey to use for sweetening and medical purposes as the bees would have no food. But issues facing various species can often feel very remote as they do not direct us it directly. We know glaciers are melting at a phenomenal rate due to global warming, but living in land, we don't see the impact of rising sea levels. For the Maldive Islanders, it is a very real threat. Their country will have disappeared under the waves by the end of the century if nothing changes. The rising temperatures affect polar bears, whose icy habitat is already rapidly disappearing, making hunting food difficult and threatening them with extinction. We may feel there isn't much we can do to help, but every small action each one of us makes contributes to a much larger impact. All of us are encouraged to reduce our use of items that cannot be recycled and recycling others as much as we can using the appropriate council bin and other collection points at places such as our local supermarkets. Buying locally grown produce from farm shops, community grow or spade works cuts down on the fuel and air miles used to transport imported fruit and veg. Christians are among those seeking to do what they can to look after the environment. So in January 2016, the Eco Church scheme was launched by Russia UK, Christian Aid and Tear Fund, with the support of the Church of England the Methodist and United Reformed Churches to encourage and support churches in witnessing to God by caring for creation. The church here in Snodland has registered for the Ecos Church Awards to demonstrate our commitment to doing what we can to protect our environment and to try to turn back the clock on the destruction of creation. If you visit our churchyards you will find areas that have been left unknown and seeded with wild flowers to provide habitat. Some church members have done the same in their gardens. If you sit quietly on one of the benches, you are likely to see and hear a wide variety of birds. 
and at dusk you might see the latest litter of fox cubs playing among the gravestones or see tiny pipistrelle bats flying overhead. God tasked mankind to steward and cherish the earth. The choices we make have an impact on all of creation. We need to think about community in its widest possible sense, honouring both great and small and reminding ourselves that everything matters. Let's pray. God of all creation, as the seas rise and the air changes, when the storms rage and the crops die, do you still call it good? Jesus, our Saviour, as the birds of air change their flight and the lilies of the field are coated with dust, do you still tell us not to be anxious? Holy Spirit, source of life, as we see what we have done and hear the cries of the hungry, give us a vision of a hopeful future for an earth renewed and restored, good for everyone. Amen. <laughs>